and welcome all of you for today's session. Let us begin today's session with a few prayers. Can we display the prayers, please? Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitina Mine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna and welcome all of you for today's session. Today is the 16th session of the Knowledge Icosagon series. And we dedicate this presentation to our beloved spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. We have been discussing 20 items of knowledge as presented by Lord Krishna in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So far, we have discussed 15 items. And today, we are going to discuss the 16th item, the essence of yoga so let's begin to understand what is this all about and what is the essence of yoga how we can practice the essence of yoga uh, in today's session we shall also be seeing some case studies which can help us a lot to understand the subject matter so let's begin now the sanskrit word lord krishna uses in the 13th chapter of the bhagavad gita in this uh, in the first few shlokas is mai chananya yogena bhaktir avyabhicharini which means constant and unalloyed devotion to krishna so lord krishna after describing so many stages of advancement of knowledge then he says mai cha ananya yogena bhaktir avyabhicharini ananya yogena means always ananya always yoga means linking up always linking up with krishna mai krishna says mai unto me unto krishna mai cha ananya yogena bhakti yogena so you can become attached with krishna if you are doubted in the service of Krishna, not casually, but constantly. Mai cha ananya yogena, bhakti yogena avyabhicharini. Avyabhicharini means without break, always constantly. This is what Srila Prabhupada says in one of his lectures uh, with regard to this topic that we are discussing. Mai cha ananya yogena. Bhaktir Avyabhicharini. Krishna says the 16th item of knowledge is to constantly engage in Avyabhicharena Bhakti, unalloyed devotion towards Krishna. Constantly being engaged. Ananya means to constantly. Yogena Bhakti means the Bhakti Yoga, devotional service to Krishna. And Krishna says, what kind of devotional service? It should be avyabhicharini, unalloyed, pure, without any material contamination. So to be engaged in devotional service to Krishna constantly, without material expectations, is actually a sign of uh, a person in true knowledge. A person in real knowledge will constantly engage in uh, unalloyed or pure devotional service to Krishna. So this is the essence of yoga. Now let's try to understand more about bhakti yoga. How to constantly and how to engage in Krishna's service. Now let's see the definition of the word yoga first of all. 
Srila Prabhupada says in a lecture in Washington in 1976, July 6, in the Bhagavad Gita, they are explained differently. Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. All of them are yogas, but there are different stages. Yoga means to connect or to link up with the Supreme Absolute Truth. So that is the definition of the word yoga. Yoga means to connect with the Supreme Absolute Truth, to link up ourselves with the Supreme Absolute Truth. That is called yoga. Now, there are different types of yoga. Let us go forward and see uh, what are the different types of yoga. There are many kinds of yoga. Prominent ones are listed in the Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna. Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, also known as Dhyana Yoga, and then Bhakti Yoga. These are the four principal types of yoga described by Lord Krishna in great detail in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, Karma Yoga means through our activities, we have to connect with the Supreme. Let's go back to the previous slide. Karma Yoga means how through our activities, we can connect with the Supreme Absolute Truth. That is called Karma Yoga. We all perform a lot of activities, but how do we engage our activities in connection with the Supreme? This art of doing work is called Karma Yoga. Bhagavad Gita never says that you have to give up your work, you have to give up your karma. No. Instead, Bhagavad Gita says that we have to uh, uh, learn the art of doing the work through which we can connect with the Supreme. This is called Karma Yoga. Then, when one makes progress in Karma Yoga, so Karma Yoga is the basic, the first rung in the ladder of yoga. If yoga is compared to a ladder, the first step is called Karma Yoga. How to purify our activities. That is Karma Yoga. Once when we achieve perfection in Karma Yoga, it leads us to the next stage, that is Jnana Yoga. How by cultivation of Jnana or knowledge, we can connect with the absolute truth. That is called Jnana Yoga. So the culmination of Karma Yoga is leading us to Jnana Yoga, cultivation of knowledge. If you do your karma properly, linking up to the Supreme, you will be able to cultivate, you will come to a stage where you become inquisitive and you start cultivating spiritual knowledge. So how through cultivation of spiritual knowledge we can connect with the Supreme, that is called Jnana Yoga. And the next stage is when one is perfected in Jnana Yoga, one comes to the third stage which is called Ashtanga or Dhyana Yoga, which is about meditation on the Paramatma in the heart. Cultivation of knowledge leads to meditation. So, Dhyana on the, uh, on the Paramatma who is situated in our heart. And then when one has perfected Dhyana Yoga, one comes to the uh, perfection of Yoga, the ultimate Yoga, that is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means to learn how to love God to the to learn how to love the absolute truth who is a supremely lovable person. So, Bhakti Yoga is called the topmost yoga. So, either one can step by step uh, progress from Karma Yoga to Jnana Yoga, then to Ashtanga Yoga and then come to Bhakti Yoga. That is a gradual process. But if one is lucky enough to who, if we has come, if we come in touch with a pure devotee, then we can directly start off bhakti yoga at once. Now, Lord Krishna says in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the last shloka, where he concludes that bhakti yoga is the topmost. Lord Krishna says, 
योगिनाम अपि सर्वेशाम मद्गते नांतरात्मना श्रद्धावान भजते योमाम समे युक्त तमो मतहा लॉर्ड कृष्ण से एंड ऑफ ऑल योगी ही हु ऑलवेज अबाइड इन मी विद ग्रेट फेथ वर्शिपिंग मी इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल लविंग सर्विस is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all so lord krishna describes the different types of yoga and finally in the 6th chapter he concludes saying that the topmost yoga system is bhakti yoga and anybody who always abides in krishna with great faith worshiping krishna with great faith uh, rendering service unto him he is the one who is most intimately united with krishna and therefore he is the highest yogi so we just mentioned in the beginning that the definition of yoga is to connect with the absolute truth now different types of yogas will help us to connect with the absolute truth to different degrees but close proximity close connection with the absolute truth is possible through the process of bhakti yoga therefore bhakti yoga is called the topmost yoga so that is the conclusion in the bhagavad gita and therefore in today's uh, the 16th item of knowledge that lord krishna has described in the 13th chapter of the bhagavad gita lord krishna says one who is engaged in constant pure devotional service to him to krishna who is the absolute truth himself he is a person in real knowledge a person in real knowledge engages in bhakti yoga now i told you that you you can either come step by step from karma yoga then to gnana yoga then to ashtanga yoga and then come to bhakti yoga which is a gradual process of evolution which can take us many many lifetimes that is one way of elevating our consciousness gradually to come to the point of bhakti yoga the topmost yoga or if we are or if somebody is lucky enough if he can come in touch with a pure devotee of the lord by the influence of the pure devotee one can directly take up the topmost yoga system that is bhakti yoga now that is the whole krishna consciousness movement which was inaugurated by chaitanya mahaprabhu about 500 years ago the movement is all about making people fortunate of uh, by which they can actually directly come to the highest yoga process that is bhakti yoga so krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga is the topmost process and it is uh, simultaneously simple and sublime anybody can take take to this bhakti yoga process and practice it now the next question comes how should we practice this bhakti yoga what are the uh, uh, what what should be our consciousness while we are practicing bhakti yoga devotional service to krishna which is the topmost yoga let's move forward and discover this in the bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam which fully describes the signs of bhakti yoga there are these symptoms of genuine bhakti described in the first canto second chapter there it is said सवै पुंसा परो धर्मो यतो यथोक्षजे अहैतुक्य प्रतिहता ययात्मा सुप्रसीदती सो दीज टू वर्ड्स अहैतुकी एंड अप्रतिहता आर अंडरलाइंड हियर एंड दे आर बोल्डेड इन बोल्डेड सो व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस लेट्स सी द सुप्रीम ऑक्युपेशन और धर्मा फॉर ऑल ह्यूमैनिटी इज दैट by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent lord such devotional service must be ahaituki unmotivated and apratihata uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self yayatma suprasidati so how should we practice this bhakti yoga 
we should practice bhakti yoga uh, by uh, in this way ahaituki apratihata being without any material motives and apratihata uninterrupted constant immaterial of the circumstances so we have to rise up to the stage of bhakti yoga now we are all very fortunate by the mercy of shila prabhupada who is a pure devotee of the lord a pure representative of chaitanya mahaprabhu we have come in touch with the topmost yoga system that is bhakti yoga now generally we begin our bhakti yoga process by hearing about krishna from devotees or by reading from shila prabhupada's books or by chanting the hare krishna maha mantra and we continue to practice it now if we want to attain the perfection of bhakti yoga that means to be intimately connected with krishna intimately united with krishna then we have to uh, practice bhakti yoga uh, which is ahaituki and apratihata we should not practice bhakti yoga for some material purposes though in the beginning days we may have material motives because of which we might take a bhakti yoga but by uh, gradual association with devotees we have to uh, come to a stage where our devotional service is unmotivated we have to understand that since we are part and parcel of krishna we are actually meant to render service to him that is our natural or original occupation and we must practice bhakti yoga keeping this understanding in mind i am actually meant for giving service to krishna and this is my natural uh, position and only then i can be completely happy so uh, therefore our devotional service should be without material motives and it should be not dependent on material circumstances say for example uh now shila prabhupad has told us to chant hare krishna maha mantra every day now uh sometimes we might feel oh today i am very busy better today i will not chant tomorrow let me see it that means it is circumstantial dependent huh? now it is a it is a dictation or it is the direction of the spiritual master that we need to practice certain things every day now immaterial of whether we have a busy day or not so busy day we must practice we must cultivate this uh, uh, this faith and this consistency uh, in practice of bhakti yoga that means our bhakti yoga should not be dependent on material circumstance when we practice bhakti yoga with these two symptoms that is ahaituki unmotivated and apratihata uninterrupted then we can completely attain satisfaction and not only that we can attain complete union with lord krishna we can attain complete intimate connection with him which is the actual goal of human life which is the purpose of all knowledge Now let us see some case studies to highlight these two points, ahaituki and apratihata. By studying these cases, we will understand much better, and it can also inspire us. Let's see the first case study. Yes, this is a well-known history of a young boy, a young devotee of Lord Krishna, Prahlad Maharaj, Bhakta Prahlad. Now, Prahlad Maharaj. Uh, when he was in the womb of his mother he got the instructions from narad muni about the science of bhakti yoga about krishna consciousness and ever since his birth he uh, is he is a pure devotee of the lord now uh, ahaituki unmotivated he performed devotional service to krishna by constantly chanting his names by constantly remembering him not for any material reasons but the very name prahlada means uh, prakrishta rupena ahlada one who is completely joyful how can one be completely joyful when one is connected with krishna constantly in bhakti yoga one can be completely joyful 
so prahlada uh, was completely uh, experiencing that spiritual bliss because of constant uh, remembrance of the lord smaranam hmm? so it was not for material reasons because he understood the science of krishna consciousness from narad muni he took pleasure in remembering the lord by performing bhakti yoga and was his devotional service apratihata was it uninterrupted yes it was very much uninterrupted you can look at the picture here even though he was tortured by the demoniac servants of his father hiranyakashipu he did not give up his practice of bhakti yoga this is apratihata oh he did not say oh my father is now torturing me so that i can i should give up this bhakti yoga therefore let me for my own protection let me give up this bhakti yoga let me stop chanting the lord's names uh, he didn't say that in spite of all difficulties uh, prahlad maharaj did not abandon bhakti yoga so therefore uh, this is an example for ahaituki apratihata bhakti let us see one more case study now the second case study is about bhishma deva the grandfather of the pandavas and the kauravas now bhishma deva he was no doubt uh, involved in many political uh, issues he was very much concerned about the safety of hastinapura now amidst all these political responsibilities bhishma deva is still was still a pure devotee of lord krishna and especially we can see this uh, while he was lying down on the bed of arrows at the end of the battle of kurukshetra even in such a painful situation where his whole body was pierced with sharp arrows of arjuna still bhishma deva uh, continued to remember krishna and in fact being moved by the devotion of bhishma deva krishna personally came to give his darshan to him while he was about to leave his body so bhishma deva is a wonderful example for all of us to see to show how one can remain a devotee of the lord uh, and side by side execute one's material responsibilities hmm? of course bhishma deva knew that the pandavas will emerge victorious eventually but still due to certain reasons he had to side up the kauravas in the battle of kurukshetra but uh, towards the end of the of his life which was a glorious uh, way to give up one's body uh, bhishma deva has shown us that how uh, one should remain constantly uh, in thought of lord krishna so this is an example where in spite of difficult material circumstances bhishma deva continued to practice bhakti yoga that means it is apratihata without interruption no material circumstances uh, you know caused him to give up devotion to krishna so this is a wonderful example that we have to follow in the step, footsteps of bhishma deva the last case study uh, we are going to discuss is about a character from ramayana and this is the uh, this famous character is called jatayu jatayu the uh, he was a vulture a bird and we all know this incident as it as it is depicted in this picture when mother sita was being abducted carried away by force by uh, the demon king ravana at that time jatayu uh, comes to rescue mother sita jatayu comes to rescue mother sita now he is doing this as a service to the lord to lord ramachandra hmm? now he is just a bird he is not as powerful as ravana but he fought very valiantly against ravana even though he was unsuccessful in his attempt to rescue mother sita he fought for mother sita till the end of his life so we all know what happens the evil king ravana cuts off the wings of jatayu and jatayu falls down on the ground now 
even at that point of time he somehow manages to uh, stay alive to give this news to lord rama who would be coming that way and you see this is an example for ahaituki apratihata jatayu did not have any material reason to do this no he did not think that oh uh, i'm going to get some benefit if i try to save mother sita no he did not think that way he thought it's a wonderful opportunity to serve uh, the lord and also uh, it was uninterrupted i mean it was not affected by material circumstances even though he knew very well that ravana is very powerful and he is no match to him still jatayu tried his best in fact he laid down his life for the sake of lord's service so when lord ramachandra later came by that way he saw jatayu who was breathing his last and jatayu passed this message to Ra lord rama that the evil king ravana has kidnapped mother sita and then he passed away and lord ramachandra was so much touched by the devotional service rendered by jatayu that lord ramachandra personally performed the final rites for jatayu considering him equal to his own father we must remember that when dhritarashtra sorry when uh, the father of lord rama passed away dashrath maharaj when he passed away lord rama was not in ayodhya and he could not perform the final rites for his father so that uh, thing that final rites which lord rama was not able to perform for his own father he performed for this jatayu so you can just understand the glory of devotional service anybody who is engaged in devotional service to krishna uh, even if it is an unsuccessful attempt he will be uh, rewarded by the lord there will be reciprocation from the lord so these are the three case studies which depict uh, or which talk about the symptoms of pure devotional service ahaituki apratihata unmotivated and uninterrupted so that is what krishna also says in the 13th chapter of the bhagavad gita if a person is in true knowledge then he engages in constant and unalloyed devotion towards me that is a symptom of a realized person or a person in true knowledge so let's move forward so how what will happen to us when we engage in devotional service to krishna so there is a promise that krishna is making in the ninth chapter of the bhagavad gita lord krishna says ananyas chintayanto mam ye jana paryupasate tesham nityabhiyuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham lord krishna says but those who worship me with devotion meditating on my transcendental form to them i carry what they lack and preserve what they have so it's a promise that lord krishna is making here anybody who worships me with devotion with faith meditating on my personal form to them i do two things first is i carry i supply what they lack and secondly i preserve what they have this is called yoga kshemam not only what we have lord krishna preserves but he also supplies what we lack if we engage in his constant devotional service now the word used here is ananya chintayantaha ananya means no other object chintayantaha means to constantly meditate so undeviatingly not deviating our attention to any other object if we simply focus on the transcendental form of krishna and meditate upon him with devotion then krishna is promising that he will always take care of what we require and he preserves what we have now we we see many examples of this where for example prahlad maharaj himself by his uh, pure devotional service lord himself came as narsimha and protected prahlad maharaj isn't it and we saw here in the case of bhishma deva lord himself came in his presence when he was about to quit his body so bhishma deva personally saw 
Krishna uh, while he was quitting his body. And thirdly, Jatayu, Lord Ramachandra personally performed the final rites for Jatayu and awarded him liberation. So anybody who is engaged in constant devotional service to the Lord, you can be rest assured that the Lord is always there to give us his protection. He, he carries us, he gives us what we lack and he preserves what we have. Now the easiest and the simplest way to engage in devotional service to Krishna is to chant the holy names of Krishna. So let us all chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra constantly. And while we are chanting, let us all appeal to the Lord. My dear Lord, always keep me in your remembrance. Let me always remember you. Always bless me so that I can never forget you. And in this way, we have to aspire to always remain fixed up in remembrance of the Lord. We will take up questions at the end of the session. Now we shall chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra together. And we will chant for about five times, five to six times. First, we should chant the Panchatattva Mantra one time. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Now we shall chant the Hare Krishna Mantra together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So I request all of all to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra every day without missing. And in fact, at least 108 times, which is called one round of Hare Krishna Mantra, we must chant every day. Now uh, we are open for questions. Anyone has any questions based on what we discussed? Please feel free to uh, ask your questions. We have about three to four minutes left to end the session. If anyone has a question, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna Vaishnavi. Yes. What's your question? My question is, uh, uh, since Ram, uh, Ravana was killed by Lord Rama, did he get liberated? Oh yes, definitely. So, actually, it is described in the Bhagavatam that Jaya and Vijaya, the doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, they were cursed by the four, four sages, the Kumaras, to be born as demons and be killed by the Lord and then go back to Vaikuntha. So, uh, in the first life, Jaya and Vijaya, they appeared as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyaksha was killed by Vamana Deva, Hiranyakashipu, sorry, Hiranyaksha was killed by Varaha Deva and Hiranyakashipu was killed by Narsimha Dev. And then both of them again took birth in Treta Yoga as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. Both of them were killed by Lord Rama. And finally, in their last life, they took birth in Dwapar Yoga as Shishupala and Dantavakra. And both of them were killed by Lord Krishna. And finally, they attained liberation. They went back to Vaikuntha. So I hope that answers your question. Any other question anyone has? Hare Krishna, I know who is this. I am Santosh Bro. Yeah, Santosh. Hare Krishna. Uh, how can we uh, practically uh, apply uh, Aprati Hatha, constant uninterrupted service? So yeah. We have many other works. Okay. So, yes, constantly we have to engage in devotional service. Uh, first thing is, we understand 
that of course it is possible only through association of devotees when you are associated with devotees constantly uh, the influence of the association of devotees is such that it motivates us it keeps us inspired to practice unalloyed or to practice uninterrupted devotional service so therefore without association of devotees it is actually not possible for us to practice bhakti yoga devotional service so the enthusiasm the patience determination which is required for us on a daily basis to practice bhakti yoga to practice chanting to practice our sadhana we can get that by the association of devotees so one line answer for the question that you asked is always be in touch with devotees that is how you can uh, practically be uh, uh, you know constant in your devotional any other question anyone has one more question we can take up that means everybody has completely fully understood about today's uh, 16th item of knowledge maicha ananyena yes somebody is asking some yes quickly ask your question we have just some few seconds uh, prabhu like uh, when uh, you form like uh, ram uh, ram is like a god He is just uh, thinking like uh, Rajno Prabhu. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to get your question. I think there is some internet problem. Hello. Oh, okay, I think so. We can uh, take up this question personally. You can message your question to me on WhatsApp. Uh, thank okay, you so please. much for, for being part of today's session. and we shall meet again in the next session with another interesting topic thank you very much hari krishna thank you so much hari krishna prabhu